Welcome to Inside Tech Soma on this Sunday morning. I'm Melissa Kakarika. February is Black History Month, so on this episode of Inside Tech Soma, we're taking an inside look at Black History Month and some organizations in our community and how it impacts them. First step is reach one to teach one. So I am joined by Cedric Turner and Francis Turner from this organization. Welcome, you guys. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay, so first of all, tell us what your organization is because it's relatively new. Our uh, foundation is uh, Reach One to Teach One, and it's basically a foundation to build for our everyday working people. Uh, we want to give them a platform to be seen and to heard, and all the, it, all the proceeds that come into our Reach One to Teach One uh, uh, program, 90% will go back out to the community. Because we want to set that example that it's very important to any resources come in, you know, to be able to go back and help our community as much as we can. Um, basically, what we want to do is um, just go out and just teach and to you know just to help one another and now it being black history month you guys are also running a little bit of a campaign called our history right. month tell us about that and how it all coincides well with our history month it's a thing on the website you go to the website it's a link on there because we wanted to it's not taking black history month out because it's it's a month but we want to get the history for everyone our history because america was built on every race here so we want to make sure that we don't forget where we came from if we're going to be reminded let's remember america was built with us working together so if we want us to make it here in this world we got to work together and so that's what reach one to teach one is trying to do bring everyone together and just help out in the community give an example of like our history to let us know where we're headed and what direction we're trying to take it so we just want to let everyone have their aspect their views because we see things different depending on the way we were raised, but at, it, at the end of the day, we want to know that it's, we're all fighting the same battle and we're just trying to survive and make history, you know? And basically, and you know, that's a good point. Thank you, Cedric. And that's why we've asked different cultures to come in. We've had um, some of them you will see online, a uh, Spanish professor, uh, Dr. Oxford, that gave her point of view of history, how it affected her. Not only that, we wanted them to give us a reason, you know, look to the audience and give them, you know, a reason of hope you know, to, to make that change. We also invited uh, Miss Arthur B. Williams, you know, a retired judge, you know, to give things from her perspective. You know, Mr. London. So we've gone throughout our community, you know, trying to get them to give us their point of view. You know, how did history, how did slavery affect you? How did it affect your culture? And it's very important that we understand it because not only that our culture was affected by slavery, everyone has been affected by it. And I think it's very important that we get educated and understand that it's just not one culture that suffered, you know, any miss wrong. And I think once that, like Cedric said, once we understand that, that we're on the same boat and we can work together and understand one another, I think things will go a whole lot better. It's just understanding one another. And the only way you can do that is to, is to be educated. And I imagine there's a lot of different topics that come up in these videos when we yes. talk about black history or history in general as the right. point that we're making. Yes. Right. <laughs> like you want to touch on some of the big ones? Uh, basically, you know, like for the Freedom Riders, you know, so much we focus on something that happened back in 1961. Okay, you know, I'm grateful for what happened to our ancestors. We appreciate that they've gone, what they went through, what they went through. But at the end of the day, how can we take that information and apply it today? How can we improve? What can we do today? What can we tell our people today what you need to do to improve? And so instead of focusing on what happened in 1961, let's focus on, you know, uh, listen to people with wisdom. As I mentioned, like Arthur B. Williams, you know, what does she have to say? Some of the things she pointed out, men need to raise their children. Some of the other things she said, get involved in your community. That's what we need to hear because 1961 history, you, you know, we won't forget it, but we can't live it. And I think that's what's happening. We're trying to live it, but you cannot. You've got to let it go. You, you may not be able to let the, let, forget about the pain, but you, got to, you, you can't live it. And those are some of the things, and some of the other things that Arthur B. mentioned about being a, being a good doer, you know, being, being positive in your community. Reach out. She, she, and she also stated, go and vote. Because some of, you know, that was one of the things that our black slave, our people did. They went and they fought for give us a right to vote. And she said, we need to go out and vote. Right, civil rights, civil rights movement, also yes. obviously being a big part of this month. And the this Jim Crow discussion. Yes, right. like the Jim Crow law. You know, they went, you know, to go and march. You know, and their mindset was to go, you know, not as peace. You know, and and I think that's one thing that I noticed. You know, it says that they went to defy, and defy means they went to resist. You know, so automatically, you you your your mind is set up that 
we're going to prove a point. Is that the right thing to do? So you've got two people saying, okay, these are the rules, and then these group over here saying, we're going to break the rules. Rules are rules. So, you know, you, we, can, we have to learn to stand up for what's right, and we don't have to fight. And I think back then, we, we were so mindset to fight for our rights, and I don't, think we, I, don't, I don't think we had to do it that way. I think a lot of the bloodshed could have been avoided because there were laws, you know, and, and it just takes time to overcome those laws. It's just a matter of time. And so I think we were just trying to go out and change it ourselves, and we caused more issues than we did more good. So that's why it was so much bloodshed, I believe. Interesting. And now, talking about civil rights and history, you know, you're really making the message of looking forward yes. to the future. So how far have, you, have we come as a society as you look back over these important moments in history based well, upon today? I would say, you know, as a matter of fact, like Arthur B. Williams, she, you know, I mentioned her a lot because she said, you know, back then it was, we didn't, it was not our, we didn't have a say-so to be in slavery. Our ancestors didn't have a say-so. Now we do. So what are you going to do with your free time? You know, what are we going to do about now? And that's what's important. You know, like I said, you can't, you can't forget the hurt, but you can't live in it. So what do we do? We got to move on. You know, like uh, Rosa Parks, you know, we know about her story. She wanted to sit in the front seat and she refused to be removed. Now what do we do with that? Now you can say with a smile on your face, you know what? I can sit anywhere I want to sit without any problems. That's what I think our focus should be. Not focus on the fact that, you know, she was, you know, arrested, but what she did and give us the benefit for that. You know, we can sit by any culture without any problems, you know, and have peace about it. So that's what we, that's what we want our cultures to know is look at things from a positive perspective, you know, because if you look at it from a negative perspective as to what happened to our ancestors, we are not going to go forward. We're going to continue to go backwards, and that's going to cause conflict, conflict and misunderstanding within a society. And the progression has changed just with my generation. I know I wasn't there at the time of slavery, but just the stories growing up and learning things in school and seeing the times now, there is more opportunities. Yes. And we as this generation, we have to take advantage of opportunity. We can't blame something that happened. All we can do is learn from it. And that's what we're trying to do, reach and teach people. So we learn, hey, we can make a change. We can do better. That's what, that's what the whole mission is to learn to learn knowledge knowledge will get you so far in world in this world just you got to be open to it can, instead of just doing the same thing you don't want to repeat history but you want to change it so at the end of the day that's what we want to do with our history month just change the outlook of it and give us a, a, a new freedom pretty much at the end of the day a new freedom Definitely a little bit of a, a different perspective, but I think a very important one and a very great one, especially for Black History Month, our History Month 2015. Yes, I know there is a website if people want to hear more about this yes. and see more videos with this perspective, right? Yes. What is it? www.reachoneteachone.com. You can find them on all social media platforms, um, Facebook, Twitter, and even YouTube, and they're all reachone2teachone.com. So check it out. Thank you guys so much for being here and sharing your perspective with us this morning. Thank you. We appreciate it. Coming up, we're going to have a whole lot more on Black History Month. We're going to talk to our local NAACP. Welcome back to Inside Texoma. Right now I'm joined by Roger Scott, the president of our local NAACP chapter here in Wichita Falls. Welcome, Roger. Thank you. And now the NAACP, we're talking about Black History Month. Obviously the NAACP and its formation, an important part of Black History Month. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the organization? Well, I think it is very important. It is the oldest civil rights organization in the United States. Uh, to give you a little uh, insight about the NAACP, we do have a rich history, but let me read our mission statement and then I'll read our objectives. And uh, no one can disagree with the objectives, I'm sure. Uh, the, our mission statement says, the mission of the NAA National Association of the Advancement of Colored People is to ensure the political education 
and social and e economic quality of rights of all persons and to eliminate race-based discrimination. The objectives are to ensure the political, education, social, and economic equality of citizens, to achieve equality of rights and eliminate race prejudice among citizens of the United States, to remove all barriers of racial discrimination through democratic process, to seek in enactment and enforcement of federal, state, and local laws securing civil rights, to inform the public of the, ad of the adverse effect of racial discrimination and to seek its elimination, to educate persons as to constitutional rights, to take all lawful action to secure and exercise thereof, and to take any other lawful action in furtherance of these object objectives, consistent with the NAACP Articles of Incorporation and its Constitution. That's our war cry there. <laughs> now, the NAACP, as, you, as I've said, is the oldest civil rights organization, and to my estimation, my opinion, um, the most astute uh, organization now working. And we work within the laws to change some laws. Uh, so our history is very rich. You can go on the uh, internet and pick up whatever you want to. So I won't sit here and try to regurgitate back to you all of the things and the accomplishments that we have. But to get into black history and everything that, we, well, I'll try to answer the questions that you may have concerning. Now, I am Roger C. Scott, Jr. I uh, am a college graduate. I have a master's degree. I retired from West Texas A&M University, Canyon, Texas. I've been retired since 96, so I'm a little out of the loop. <laughs> for, but I came to Wichita Falls and became a part of the NAACP here because I know the importance of it. And oh. I have two life memberships and one sustaining membership. So my dedication to it, uh, I think, is second to none. I believe I had a young man to tell me the other day, well, that we have overcome. And our war song is, we shall overcome. In no way have we overcome because some of the injustice that was practiced back then during the founding of this organization still exists today. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a believer that if you don't remember your history and adhere to it, you're doomed to repeat it again. We don't plan to repeat that history. Therefore, we must teach our young people the history of this country, the history of the NAACP, and the black person's plight in this country. Nothing has been given, it's been earned uh, down through the years. And then that we have our heroes who have stepped forth and been our champions for justice. Now are there particular moments in history or things the NAACP has done that you really point to during Black History Month to make that point and really strike that? All the gains that you see that we've made in law, in education, in order to be able to desegregate the schools, the NAACP was a major factor in that. In the Voter, Voters' Rights Act, the NAACP was a champion in this area. So all the progress that has been made since slavery, you can attribute it to the NAACP in most instances. And why is it so important for you and the organization of the NAACP to have a month set aside for Black History Month to remember? What is the importance of that? So that our young people will know our rich history 
and the struggle that we have been through to achieve where they are today. They didn't get there because oh, they're so pretty and they're so smart and those kinds of things. It took sacrifices and hard work. See, there's a film out now called Selma. I lived the Selma. I'm 80 years old. I attended the separate but equal school. I came up through that era when only books that I received in school had been used by others and passed down. Never got new textbooks. Went to the separate but equal schools, which was so unequal. Fought for many things. In, in, in the right to live wherever you want to in this country. There were rules on the book in the city that I came from before I came here. I didn't know that for a time until I joined the NAACP in the fight. There were rules in the, um, they call them, our, I'm trying to think of the ordinance. There were or city ordinance that prohibited blacks and people of color from living in Southwest Amarillo. And I don't know if they have the same here or have had the same here, but I know you didn't see that many out there. But I lived through that and lived to change those rules, fought to change those rules. I'm one of the ones who house has been firebombed, house has been shot, and all these things. I came up through the Selma. They, so I know the history, the rich history. We have succeeded in most of the play things that we've been able to enter into. Finance, medicine, uh, pro, pro ball and everything like that. See, there once was a time it was said we couldn't quarterback. We couldn't play center in the pros. We couldn't coach in the pros. Take a look now. We've come a long ways. When I was in school, the same was the same way, the separate but equal, we got the pass downs. We got the pass down uniform from the old Sandys. We got the pass down books. I have a doctor, friend of mine in Amarillo, his name is Richard Archer, very well known. We're about the same age and he told me, and he was my doctor, he said, Roger, I have your education and mine too because as he attend, was able to attend Emerald High School, I attended what we call Carver High School. Well, it was called Patton at first. We had no laboratories, science laboratories and things like that. They had them at Emerald High. So the catch-up game is still going on, and it's going on today, even in Wichita Falls. History being counseled into the nation-building skills is what we want. We don't want to be counseled into sociology and basket weaving. We want the sciences and the finances. We want to be coached into those areas too. And that's what's lacking. You will find that we have a committee in the NAACP to deal with all of the ills of the community. But we are having trouble getting soldiers that we can train to fight the battle. See, I don't go into battle without trained soldiers. You'll never see me out there with diarrhea at the mouth, leading a march without substance. You've got to have money or knowledge to do these things. And that's, that's why some people ask, what are y'all doing or where's the NAACP? If you don't come to meeting and you don't get trained, you're not going to speak for the NAACP. And we have rules and regulations that we have to get permission from the national office to get involved in certain activities. We have to even get, rule, get permission to give interviews and make sure. So today, let me put a disclaimer to this. I'm coming as Roger C. Scott, Jr., citizen, honor, Honorable discharge from the armies of the United States. I'm coming as a citizen of the United States. I am not speaking for the NAACP National Office. Well, Roger, thank you for coming here as a citizen. Thank you for sharing so many 
personal experiences as we mark Black History Month and of course talk about the future as you talked about. I want to thank you so much for your time this morning. Welcome back to Inside Texoma on this Sunday morning. Right now I'm joined by Patricia Cooper. Welcome to Inside Texoma, Patricia. Thank you. So now you work over at the Green Door, uh, located at the Martin Luther King Center. Yes. So tell us a little bit about the connection there, Green Door and MLK Center. Uh, Green Door is a part of the kitchen, um, and we are inside of the Martin Luther King Center. Uh, we have our hours from like from 10 to 2, and we serve lunch over there uh, from 12 to 12.30, and we also have like activities in um uh, bingo and things like that for our senior citizens. And now you guys actually have an event coming up for Black History Month, right? Yes, yes we do. So tell us what's going to be going on. Well on that day, on February the 20th at uh, 1 o'clock, we will have um, a Black History skit. We have a skit by Melba Jean Holder, she'll be doing that. And we also have some singing and uh, with her and Mackie Hayes. And then we'll have uh, some poetry and then also we'll have um, some singing also. So you said February 20th, what time is that going to be? At 1. At 1 o'clock, mm -hmm. and is that open to anyone in the community? Yes, anybody's welcome to come. And why would you encourage somebody to come? Well, um, I would encourage someone to come because, I mean, it's black history, and it's just, it, well, hopefully that you can see some of the things that uh, they have, ex you know, talk, hear some of the things that they have maybe experienced and uh, enjoy some good singing and also to get out to kind of uh, see uh, what the senior citizens hang out and have lunch and enjoy fellowship with other seniors. Will the people there be um, singing traditional black hymns or speaking oh. about a certain topic? Okay, yes, they will be speaking of uh, Miss Beverly Jean. She want to do something over like um, We Shall Overcome. Uh, she hadn't told me all about what she'll be doing, but it's kind of it'll be a surprise to me. And then, like uh, poetry, uh, we'll have uh, Mr. White. He will be uh, talking, reading poetry, something that he has um, has written. So, and the the singing is old hymns. It's some old hymns. Um, I know one of the hymns that I overheard today was "Walk with Me." So they'll be singing that also. And now why was it so important for you guys to put this together? It's important because um, to see, uh, uh, you know, having senior citizens come together and to talk about some of the things that, that happened uh, in their past and, and just seeing how far they have come from, you know, from what they did go through and where they at today. Is it important to you and to everyone over at the Green Door and the MLK Center to celebrate Black History Month? Yes, it is. It's very important because, I mean, even like, you know, for our younger peoples to even know the importance of uh, black history and uh, the how the we have come a long way in where we is today. Now, is there a particular message maybe for, for the general public that you would want to get out there? Um, I would just encourage, um, if you're not doing anything during that time, just come out and join us. All right, well, Patricia, I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning on Inside Tech Summit. Anything you'd like to add as we wrap up the show? I think that'll be it. All right, well, thank you so much uh -huh. for coming out to represent the MLK Center and the Green Door. I'm really excited that somebody's having an event here to celebrate Black History Month. Right. Oh, thank you so uh, much. Uh -huh, thank and you. thank you for joining us on this episode of Inside Tech Summit.